seventy percent of Indian home savings mm-hmm. are in fixed deposits. Right. Only fourteen percent, one four percent, are in stock markets. Okay. No. Okay. The amount of money lying in fixed deposits in India, belonging to mm-hmm. citizens of India, is two point three trillion dollars. That's mm-hmm. trillion with a T, right? Wow. <laughs> Welcome back to an exciting episode with Nikhil Agarwal. We just had an interesting conversation with him in the part one founder's story, wherein he spoke about his journey and gave a few interesting tips and tricks for budding entrepreneurs. Be sure to check it out. Moving on in this segment, Dhande Ki Baat, we are going to deep dive into the world of alternate investment and talk about various innovations that Grip Invest, which is Nikhil's company, has done. And we'll also kind of deep dive into a few of innovative products and kind of try to demystify them and understand what can be done and what kind of benefits that it can get for you as an investor if you're looking to invest. Having said that, Nikhil, let's start the brand new segment, Dhande Ki Baat. Let's get it from the top. Uh, what is the origin story of the name of Grip Invest? Uh, hi, Shah. So it's a uh, it's um, you know we were looking for a word that mm-hmm. communicated that you would have control okay like mm-hmm. we felt that as as people who were investing our own money earlier mm-hmm. we were at the mercy of someone giving us advice right someone right. investing our money for us our branch mm-hmm. rm telling us ki is mutual fund mein ya is ulip mein ya isme laga do and all of us have right. made those mistakes of investing which have not resulted in great returns or high taxes right and right. we felt that you know there are people now who are you mm-hmm. know you are booking travel on your own you're not dependent on a travel agent you're planning these exotic holidays you are True. buying a car online you're buying a home online you are mm-hmm. so empowered for everything in your life you are you can right. do any education course you want online and plan your journey mm-hmm. and and then you have the ability to start your you know an entrepreneur ca- career but mm-hmm. financial investments are so restricted access mm-hmm. is so restricted and then you have no mm-hmm. control so we were right. looking for a word that co- that that conveyed that we are giving back control to you because that's what we wanted and hence the word mm-hmm. grip came so grip implied right. that you now have the decision as an investor to see all mm-hmm. the information transparently and decide for yourself and at the right. same time every investment you make is backed by some kind of asset and so that mm-hmm. you have a real control and you hold on to something that is real and not just illusion right not just on mm-hmm. paper so that is Makes where sense. the word grip came uh from perfect no i think this really makes it a lot more relevant uh given the business that you are in as well uh having said that right let's get straight to it uh alternate investment classes right uh we have heard a lot about it and i've personally also dabbled a bit in a few asset p2p uh one of your uh, lease financing and a few others but what is this entire uh, funda of alternate investment classes and uh, why essentially is the need for it uh, there in the market yeah first of all i must tell you i i hate the word alternative i i really dislike <laughs> it and mm-hmm. since we started grip i've been trying to find a new word uh, that i can mm-hmm. use to define what we do uh um, okay. because alternative doesn't mean anything right it 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 right. would mean investing in uh, farmland in australia uh to mm. investing in a corporate bond it doesn't mean anything um true i think the way i'd like to say to answer your question describe the need is as indians we mm. really like we prefer fixed income investing okay right. and numbers speak for themselves 70% mm-hmm. of indian home savings mm-hmm. are in fixed deposits right only 14% 14% mm-hmm. are in stock markets okay. no okay the amount of money lying in fixed deposits in india belonging to mm-hmm. citizens of india is 2.3 trillion dollars that's mm-hmm. trillion with a t right wow so as a country 
that is where we prefer or fixed income is what we prefer to invest in right till some time back that used to be generating a decent return hmm. but in the last 4 5 years inflation rates have increased and fd rates have remained broadly the same right resulting in actually almost no real returns for investors you know in, right. if inflation is going up at 5% and your fd that's 6% you're only making mm. 1% return true what we wanted to solve for was to give a mm. next let's say a next generation of fixed income mm. investment options that really allowed you a chance to make money right that is what grip is about now you can call mm. it alternative you can call it new age you can call it whatever but what we are trying to mm. provide users is another set of fixed income options that allow mm. you to earn better return they 100% come with high, with slightly higher levels of risk but we believe mm-hmm. that that risk reward mix is still very attractive makes sense makes sense uh having said that right uh, how many type of new age investment classes are there in the market right now i think there are i i would i would be able to probably there are probably more than 10 but i can think of mm-hmm. 10 on the top of my head and i think even new age needs to be defined none of these Definitely. asset classes mm-hmm. did not exist before okay right it is just that they did not exist for a retail investor to invest in in a small ticket sense mm-hmm. i'll give an example understood we talk about um, you know investing in agriculture land that's a mm-hmm. investment option it's not offered on by grip but it's it's there obviously mm-hmm. agriculture and land investing was possible before okay right. but it is now been made available at a smaller ticket size one mm-hmm. of the products on our platform called loanx and you know we can talk right. more about it is a product that that every year sees 20 billion dollars of investment just in india okay wow. every year last year that mm-hmm. market grew by 30% but mm-hmm. it has never been available for an individual investor no understood i think the what grip and other platforms are doing is to try to make that access possible at a small ticket size in a digitally comfortable manner with all the regulation mm. in place makes sense makes sense so these are not essentially completely new products but these are products new for the retail segment which earlier were only available to family offices and hnis absolutely essentially democratizing it for the masses perfect perfect i think there is no better use of technology than uh, bringing the financial inclusion and in making these kind of assets available for the larger segment uh, having said that right uh, which are probably one of your or some of your favorite uh, new age so as to say uh, investment asset classes that you uh, are either personally excited about or are really kind of bullish on i think the uh... if i talk within the what grip offers there's a product mm-hmm. called loanx which we offer on our mm-hmm. platform and that's something mm-hmm. that i'm personally ex- excited about as i as i mentioned this is already a market that has existed historically mm-hmm. very large market but for the mm-hmm. first time grip has been able to make it available at a ticket size of just 1 lakh rupees you know? all of that being a sebi regulated product and has all the comfort mm-hmm. factors that a retail investor would expect this is a product that i am really excited about and maybe if i can take a minute share us i'll i can try to explain why i'm excited about it let's sure, take sure. a let's take an fd fixed deposit as an example mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. and say that fixed deposit is the highest has the best safety okay right best safety is defined as triple a okay 0% mm. default rate triple a right now an fd today gives you 6% return. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Loanx. A Loanx mm-hmm. product has a historical default rate of one percent. Okay. In the history of the country, rating agencies have said that a product like this mm-hmm. is likely to have a one percent default rate. Okay. Right. Zero percent for FD, one percent for Loanx. Hmm. But against the six percent return that you earn in an FD, a Loanx mm-hmm. gives you fourteen percent return. Wow. Okay. So you're getting two times the return, but taking one hmm. percent more default rate. Right. Okay. 
do you so the risk reward ratio kind of yeah absolutely exactly what you said hmm. does the risk reward right. ratio make sense i think this Definitely. is a product that i'm really excited about especially because mm-hmm. it is a product that we partner with nbfcs for creating which are all rbi regulated institutions this product mm-hmm. by itself is sebi regulated each mm-hmm. of these products are listed on the stock exchange right and right. hence they are tradable and has all the mm-hmm. comfort that you need as a re- as an investor because it's available at a small ticket size right makes sense i would not call this product alternative right but it's definitely mm-hmm. new new for retail investors and i think as a right. business that is what we are really excited about providing the Got fd it. return will take you mm-hmm. 12 years to double your money yeah? right the lonex product will take you less than 5 right? perfect so should you think about mm-hmm. allocating some part of your money into products mm-hmm. like this recognizing mm-hmm. that yes there is a higher risk in these products makes sense no definitely i think uh given the risk reward ratio really kind of makes sense saying that with 1% uh, risk additional risk of 1% you are kind of getting the double the returns more than double the returns in this case uh what i also want to understand is uh this newly democratized uh, asset classes essentially how are they uh, like how safe are they basically uh, in terms of being vetted by a third party agencies Uh, are there any credit rating agencies that kind of you know give, for example, uh, Lonex as you said, right? Uh, so, are there any agencies that kind of rate these products, saying you know, hey, if FDs are triple A, this is a double A or an A, or whatever the ratings are they given? Are there any agencies out there as such? Yeah, no, I'm glad you asked this. Um, mm-hmm. I think this was one of the very important parts for us when we started Grip to say, mm-hmm. how does a user understand the risk? Okay, right. and grip is a platform that is selling this products and if it assigns its own measure of risk is it really mm-hmm. independent right i mean right. we have to sell the product so we may be motivated to sell to give a better rating mm-hmm. what we have done is to partner with credit rating agencies like crisel ikra care these are all mm-hmm. sebi regulated agencies and right. every single product on grip like the lonex product is rated mm-hmm. by this independent agency Got it hence it. communicates what is the likely level of risk and default for an investor allowing them to make a better decision today grip mm-hmm. is the only alternative investment platform which offers ratings on its products makes sense so uh, apart from lonex uh, there are a few other products also that uh, grip offers so just for my understanding essentially do you uh, is there a rating available for all of those products as well a risk rating or something like that that's right uh, now all of the products offered on grip 100% of the mm-hmm. products offered have a rating got it perfect makes sense uh, having said that right uh, in your experience so far uh, in building grip and uh, been running it for almost 4 uh, years what has been one of the major issues in uh, kind of getting the what do you say getting customers to adopt or invest like there has to be some sort of hesitation or was there any some sort of hesitation when the customers first came and saw these newly democratized and new age products that they were being offered and how did you kind of converted them to being a regular investor yeah i think the biggest challenge has been understanding the product right uh, mm-hmm. and we are we truly believe that an investor should not invest in a product unless they understand it Right. I think there are var- various ways to convince someone to buy a product, but not disclose mm-hmm. information. That is not something that we are comfortable with. We want right. the user to understand what he's getting in because it is his money, it is his choice. Mm-hmm. That is what the grip is about, right? It's about your choice. So for us, right. communicating that in a simple manner for the person to understand, I think has been mm-hmm. the biggest point of friction. What we right. know is that once a person invests, right? after understanding mm-hmm. he makes a second investment within 45 days okay right within a year he makes five investments on the platform every quarter mm-hmm. okay so we know that once a person invests the experience they have with the product is mm-hmm. so compelling that they keep coming back and investing right and i think the biggest experience biggest challenge for us has been to explain to a user in as much transparency and as possible and as much simplicity as possible on what the product is mm-hmm. in the first place 
makes sense makes sense uh having said that right uh, let's let's try to uh, understand ourselves and for our audience let's try to kind of uh, deepen that understanding of a couple of the products that you uh, you kind of have on your platform right one thing that comes to my mind is the lonex product that you were speaking about earlier uh let's kind of demystify that so, so over to you how would you kind of explain uh, lonex to a 5 year old kid assuming that the audience is completely unaware about any of the Uh, jargon or anything yeah um sure let let me give it a shot um mm-hmm. so shares let let me use you as an example so let's say i have given you a loan for 100 rupees mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. and i have i am a qualified nbfc right i have an rbi license right. to give a loan i have given you a loan and i have mm-hmm. given 100 such individuals loans okay mm mm-hmm. now let's assume that i as an nbfc need to raise money right one of the options i have is to say i have these 100 loans which are all performing mm-hmm. really well let mm-hmm. me give this loan to someone else let me sell this loan to someone else and mm-hmm. raise some money okay lonex allows the mm-hmm. nbfc to sell this loan or this portfolio mm-hmm. of loans to individuals mm-hmm. such that they Got get it. the benefit of diversification from a large pool of loans and receive the interest and principal that was originally entitled okay okay a lot of people know p2p right mm mm-hmm. lonex is nothing but a version of p2p but where the mm-hmm. loan is provided by an nbfc rather than a p2p platform each right. lonex transaction consists of over 5000 loans look okay. at okay. so every time you invest 1 lakh you are effectively mm-hmm. giving a loan of 20 rupees to 5000 mm. people right. all of these 5000 people have been identified by an nbfc kyc by mm-hmm. an nbfc and the nbfc mm-hmm. has had an experience of them paying back on time right to further protect the investor the nbfc mm-hmm. also says that i will take the first 20% of loss on this loan oh okay okay that is lonex makes sense so in this case uh, even if i as an investor am investing let's say of uh, 50000 as such so if it's divided into 20 like if it's a 20 rupees loan to 5000 people as such or a 10 rupee loan to 5000 people as such then the entire uh, concentration risk is completely disseminated from here like That's because right. since it's divided between so many people even if one person defaults it's a very small amount if there is a default the first 20% of the default uh, essentially is then again taken care of by the nbfc as such that's right makes sense which is why we are so excited about this product because mm-hmm. it it provides a whole degree of protection a lot of diversification mm-hmm. um, and still a very attractive interest rate to the investor right right makes sense uh having said that there is also one other uh, kind of interesting product that was there on your website uh, that i had come across it's called leasex right uh, that we were also speaking of earlier so what is that about also that seems to be pretty interesting and uh, i was also fascinated by the fact that the income that is generated by uh, uh, through that product for the investor is also termed as a rent income so would love to understand how this product works as well yeah let me do this via an example shreyas um mm-hmm. we recently did a leasex transaction where we mm-hmm. leased atm machines which mm-hmm. are machines which you know you would go to take out money from using a debit card right these mm-hmm. machines go to banks so we lease the machines and mm-hmm. the lesser the person leasing them has to pay monthly rental to the, to investors mm-hmm. as an investor you get to invest in this kind of a transaction so your money mm-hmm. as an investor goes into buying an atm machine which is then leased mm-hmm. to a ultimate beneficiary like a bank and every Got month it. you receive rentals so the leasex product is built on leasing physical assets to companies mm-hmm. and earning mm-hmm. rentals these assets could be atms this could be cars they could be medical equipments and hence provide mm-hmm. a fixed income return on a monthly basis it is Got one of it. our most popular products the product that we started Indeed. 2 years ago uh, and have enabled right. over 500 crores of investments through this product 
uh, but it continues to be exciting mm-hmm. because of the kind of return it provides and a very different diversification mm-hmm. as compared to a typical portfolio makes sense what would uh, essentially be something that an investor would want to would want to keep in mind from a risk perspective for this kind of a product few factors number 1 mm-hmm. the risk is dependent on the company the lessee mm-hmm. paying money on a continuous basis so if right. they if the lessee goes out of business then there is definitely mm-hmm. a risk of delay or default in payments right number 2 the protection that exists is that the asset that is leased can be recovered and redeployed somewhere mm-hmm. else or sold right the ability to do that has a certain probability right it may may not happen True. 100% recovery may not happen and that could also impact mm-hmm. returns what we have True. done to protect against this is one we take a very large security deposit from the company which acts as a protection mm-hmm. and second mm-hmm. is the monthly rentals by themselves are quite large within the first right. year 40 to 50% of a person's investment is returned in the form of rentals mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that helps mitigate the risk of this investment right makes sense interesting so uh, just also wanted to understand uh, how are essentially uh, what are the benefits for each of the parties involved right uh, here the company that's leasing it uh, investor as well as a platform like how are the uh, what are the benefits for each of those parties in this transaction sure so for the investor the benefit is getting fixed returns uh, from mm-hmm. this and having an asset behind which again goes to a point of grip right that you own the asset for the company mm-hmm. uh, who is leasing the assets they are able to get the benefit of uh, being able to use these assets without necessarily having to buy them themselves or take a loan mm-hmm. for gripping it and for us as right. a business it's really about facilitating a very new form of investment for in, for investors mm-hmm. perfect perfect makes sense i think this was this was really well explained uh, thank you so much nikhil i had a few kind of fundamental uh, doubts about uh, these products not doubts as such but uh, some uh, lack of understanding which i think kind of now has uh, been cleared out thanks a lot for that having said that uh, kind of let's move on to the next uh, next piece uh, what really intrigues me is that uh, as you said right as of now india as an economy has uh, i think 60 to 70% of their funds invested in uh, assets like fd and 17% in uh, equities given these dynamics uh, with the advent of uh, democratization of these new age uh, asset classes for the retail market what how, or how do you think uh, the entire uh, macroeconomic picture would shift and then we'll also touch upon how it affects an individual's uh, life cycle as well but as of now how do you think the macroeconomic impact would be if a mass adoption of these kind of investment products were to take place yeah so first of all i believe that indian investors need mm-hmm. far greater participation in both stock markets and in fixed income markets True. okay uh True. stock market penetration cannot remain as low as it is today there are today mm-hmm. less number of people investing in stock markets as the number of people ordering food online right uh needs to <laughs> fundamentally change uh so i think True. there will be lot more penetration lot more people will open dmat accounts lot more people will invest mm-hmm. in mutual funds or directly in the stock market and that 7 mm-hmm. that 17% number must grow at the same right. time i think there will be a lot of people who will look to invest mm-hmm. in these new age fixed income investment options and mm-hmm. the first thing that will happen is that their returns will increase right? Um, right and their investment portfolios will generate a better return i think the second thing that will happen mm-hmm. is that this money that they are investing in goes directly to companies directly to borrowers mm-hmm. imagine you are leasing mm-hmm. atm machines. someone is benefiting from that atm machine right. you are leasing electric vehicles someone mm-hmm. is benefiting from more electric vehicles on the ground you are investing in a lonex transaction and nbfc is getting more money directly mm-hmm. that to me is incredibly right. powerful for, for us as an economy because that allows those companies to either mm-hmm. grow their business faster or deploy that money to other mm-hmm. people who will then grow the business faster right 
so to me it creates a very powerful right. circular trend in the economy not only to help mm-hmm. people increase their portfolio but also to provide more capital which was lying in fixed deposits into the hands of businesses mm-hmm. small medium scale mm-hmm. small medium large businesses to really grow uh, what india needs for its uh, vision of a 5 trillion dollar economy right 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 makes sense so i think this is this is a pretty interesting uh, pretty interesting impact overall because it also kind of adds in i mean it creates an infusion of funds for these entities that was not earlier from a source that was not earlier available to them the retail investors money was never been utilized for these kind of purposes earlier in indian market and when these kind of funds are now been infused i think an overall uh, business growth as well as uh, acceleration as well could be i mean could be a possible outcome i think that as yeah, you rightly pointed I out i think correctly said imagine if all of us kept our money at mm-hmm. home at night under our mattress mm-hmm. right <laughs> that right. money is not doing anything i think the ability True. to bring it and hmm. at the same time make return at the same time create investment i think is what right. excite, is very exciting for the impact of the overall economy definitely definitely uh, also let's let's kind of drill down a bit to a micro economic level uh, from a single investor's perspective right uh, consider someone who has been investing uh, let's say he's he's had a, like a 20 year career as of now and has been investing in fds uh, as a normal uh, person of that generation would how do you see that person's next 10 years uh, kind of saving trend as well as you know a wealth creation wealth uh, growth trends changing once he starts investing in these kind of new age investment uh, asset classes yeah let's say, let's take an example of someone who has 100% of the money in fd okay mm-hmm. i think um, what i see happening is that 20 30% will go mm-hmm. should go into stock markets equity products okay? right actually let me take a step back if a person mm-hmm. has 100% in fd mm-hmm. he is doing a very linear growth in his portfolio and actually right. just being able to protect capital that's what's happening okay true the first thing that this that this investor is likely to do is to say i need a safety nest of capital mm-hmm. and i need some capital which is growing so that i can improve my quality of life okay i can mm-hmm. fulfill my ambition and the only way my money should not grow is through selling mm-hmm. unfortunately a lot of indians wealth growth is predominantly because their salary coming in right so the person should should be incentivized to take out some part of his money and invest it in mm-hmm. growing opportunities today True. there are two forms one is you could invest in the stock market which is a great mm-hmm. form of investing through mutual funds through sips right and the second is through fixed income options like the one we spoke like the ones we spoke about today which will give a higher return mm-hmm. i think over right. a period of one year i see this portfolio getting more balanced out there will mm-hmm. be maybe 30% fixed deposit 30% stock market and 30% other fixed income investments mm-hmm. as a result the total returns on this portfolio will be much better they will also be more diversified so that if if there are some kind of market shocks it gets balanced out by mm-hmm. one more other investment and hence right. my expectation is that the investor will have a more healthier investment with a much better mm-hmm. uh, wealth creation happening that's how i how Makes i see sense. uh this evolving the one thing that every financial guru ag- agrees with is the need to diversify mm-hmm. and hence Definitely. one of the biggest things we tell people coming to grip is it doesn't make a difference whether you want to put 5% of your portfolio or 10% of your portfolio or whether you would want to mm-hmm. put your money with grip make sure right. that you are having a diversified portfolio solving for different objectives in your um, in your savings perfect no that is that i think really really makes sense and uh, given the fact that i think uh, the distribution uh, not distribution as such but diversification uh, trend comes into play with asset classes giving multiple uh, variations of returns i think more than capital preservation he'll also be earning decent amount of uh, 
income from these asset classes which will actually uh, enable him to maybe you know an upgrade his lifestyle over a period of time without the increase in salary taken into consideration and i think that is a that is really a powerful tool as well uh having said that uh, let's let's kind of uh, take a step back and talk about the entire uh, i know you hate the word but uh, the alternate investment uh, classes category as such how do you think uh, or in fact actually the question is that what kind of uh, impact do you see from the upcoming uh, platforms and technologies right so for example uh, from what i mean by platforms is essentially one is the account aggregator and the second one is ondc the distribution as well as the information passage platform and the second piece is the advent of the new emerging technologies be it uh, ai ml or blockchain or any other new technologies that are currently in the nascent stage how do you see these kind of uh, platforms and technologies creating an impact on the industry that you're working in uh, in the next half a decade or so yeah no i think all of them have uh, very powerful impacts and maybe i could if it's mm-hmm. helpful i can give an example of one one thing that i feel this will have an impact sure. on i think ondc would love to hear that yeah mm-hmm. ondc uh, enable distribution at a far mm-hmm. greater scale than any one company can create uh, what right. we have seen ondc do for commerce and food we are hoping that mm-hmm. ondc will also do for financial products such as investments and create mm-hmm. a level playing field for access uh, for financial investments um, mm-hmm. i think the account aggregator will enable much better kyc for mm-hmm. uh, much better diligence and at the same time will also allow for a very high degree of customization of products if we are Indeed. all able to say that you know this is the user's portfolio and hence this is mm-hmm. what they may be looking for i think it will allow financial advisors to provide the right kind of insights and the right mix of products to them true on the ai uh, and ml side i think the um, at least if i think about my business one of the big things mm-hmm. it will call for actually is education and discovery okay and to mm-hmm. some degree degree customization because right. if you are able to use ai to understand better okay, mm-hmm. then you will be able to make more powerful decision as an investor i think even Indeed. simple things like customer chatbots okay using mm-hmm. ai to help solve for faqs better will be very very powerful right. for moving customer journey and making sure the user is more educated and finally Indeed. on the blockchain um you know we mm-hmm. already talked about democratization and fractionalization blockchain has the ability to create contracts forget crypto mm-hmm. for a minute but blockchain as a technology for right. contract creation and for protecting mm-hmm. legal interest is a very very solid Indeed. technology and that's something that could be very exciting to further create fractionalization of investments um and make sure that an investor transacting on the blockchain knows exactly what his rights are so i think each of these technologies have a role to play um uh, at grip we are constantly exploring each of these uh, mm-hmm. in fact as of today we are we are uh, doing some conversations on each of these topics with companies who are far ahead of the curve or you know specialized in this Amazing. to see how we can incorporate it at grip and to continuously provide mm-hmm. a, a better quality of experience perfect so well, i think this is really well encapsulated uh, nikhil i was uh, actually hoping for a very uh, like a very clear answer on this and i think you really provided me with that uh, what i am really excited about in uh, terms of uh, fin- future of financial services and uh, investment product in general is the growth in distribution uh, for uh, platforms that are providing unique products but have uh, essentially some sort of uh, problem scaling up on the b2c front maybe due to fund issues or whatever there is i think ondc as a platform will give a huge distribution boost and an equal uh, level playing field as you said right i think this will be a game changer as well as uh, i mean the current kyc process uh, in many cases uh, from what i've seen uh, and given the background that i've been working in one of the companies it's a, it's a patchwork process as of now like multiple apis doing a lot of different things and uh, i think what you really spoke uh, what really sparked my interest about account aggregator platform which i think i hadn't seen it that way is the ability to profile the consumer better 
right once you get the entire overview of uh, the current the person's current persona you can probably recommend the uh, better product to them or the better kind of a mix of products to them so that they can uh, correctly invest in diversify i think this would be also a really exciting piece for the industry uh nikhil i think thank you so much this has really been a very insightful conversation with you i think it was a pleasure having the conversation with you Thanks a lot. It was really a pleasure having you, Nikhil. Thank you so much. Thanks, yes. Thanks again for hosting me, and thank you for those questions. Pleasure, pleasure. Thank you so much.